everyone, my name's Sadie and I'm the community developer here at Untold Tales. I get the awesome job of helping out on Beautiful Desolation, a game made by two South African lads known as The Brotherhood. We wanted to put together a playthrough to show you how the game runs on PlayStation 4 and also to give you an idea of what the game's about. At its weird little heart, Beautiful Desolation is a story-driven sci-fi adventure game set in a post-apocalyptic, distant future South Africa. When an unknown but seemingly dormant alien technology appears above the shores of Cape Town, its immense power advances civilization on all frontiers. Then, for reasons you'll find out in the story, your character gets flung into a distant future where this untamed technology has basically led to a total collapse of modern civilization, a mutated evolution of the planet, and a total reshaping of humanity. It's also important to us that players understand what the game is, as well as what it isn't. This is not some RPG with crazy character customization item stats galore, loot hunting, or constant combat. Rather, the core of the gameplay is more about exploring the twisted sci-fi African setting, meeting bizarre characters, greetings traveller, making story-defining dialogue choices, and maybe solving a few puzzles along the way. Also, you can find some optional combat along the way, as well as some mini-games. Now let's dive into part of the main quest. Okay, so we're around 15% of the way into the game here, and we've just been told that inside this abbey, we need to speak to someone named Grave. He resides in an area called the Kettle, which is a walled off sanctuary for those who wish to escape from the Priests of Tribulation. Who, by the way, are a blood hungry religious cult made of sentient robots and augmented corpses. Yeah, lovely. So let's start by traveling to the Kettle, shall we? Just like the real South Africa, there are multiple diverse biomes in this world, and in order to travel around them, we'll be using this trusty old boy. A derelict troop transporter that we salvaged at the start of the game. As for jumping between the biomes, we need to use these portals, which are called wardens in the world. So the cutscene you see here is something the team added throughout the game to bring you closer to the world. Let's go and see if they'll let us into the kettle. Here to speak to Grave. He's a he's a someone else I can talk to maybe. No. Chat 
chatty little fellow, but not exactly helpful, right? <laughs> okay, let's try somewhere else. Well, we don't seem to have access to this door yet, so let's get back to it later. Ah, another weary pilgrim stops at Caesar's place of healing. I don't need healing, but I need answers. Caesar is a servant of the Dalahan, bound to help all in need. Ask away, my friend. Caesar will try to answer. I don't have time for servants of some crazy religion. I just need straightforward answers. Caesar is bound to answer those who ask. Even heretics like you, who spit on creation. You fleshy beings will be nothing but dust in the end. Enough of this cuck. Tell me how to get past the gates. Think of it as a test. You do not test a follower of the Dalahan. Entrance to the city requires a password, which only friends and the blood of friends may possess. Finally, something useful. So a relative of someone living inside the walls will know the password? Yes. You obviously can't help me anymore. I'll be seeing you around. And there it is, 8451. This creepy machine here scans for traces of DNA and dispenses synthesized blood to match. And wouldn't you know, we just happened to have picked something up earlier that will let us do just that. The puzzle this blood bag is needed for actually comes up much later in the game, and this is only one of two ways that you can solve the puzzle. Okay, so we know how to get into the kettle. Well, sort of. Earlier in the game, the character who gave us info about the kettle also mentioned he had a brother living inside it. So let's go and speak to him. Molo Umhambe, greetings traveller, you have found your brother, it is time to celebrate. <laughs> I hope that our last meeting provided some light to guide you on your way. Watch out for those rattling bones, Brew, a bit of you just fell into that O's drink. I hope you brother has the manners you clearly lack, traveller. You spoke about a brother who lives in the kettle. 
Yeah. Mbombe. My dear sweet brother. Have you heard word from him? Yes, I have. I heard that he needs help. He's... he's in uh, debt. Enslaved. He needs gold. I'm... I'm not surprised by this news, but... but I am saddened. I received a letter from him years ago, asking me to come to him and free him from grave. He was there because of me. Because I told him to come and serve Nevra horses as I did. And when he rejected... Rejected the stripped skin and metal bones that she bestowed unto him. She sold him to grave as penance. Did he mention a password? Get into the kettle? No. No password. But he told me to get into the kettle I would have to blacken the name of Nevra Horses. Grave worships Varia, the warrior who protects us from the dead. He wears a covering made of skin and has the head of the ram. If you give praise to Varia and blaspheme against the name of Nevra Horses, you will be granted entrance to the kettle. Now go, my friend. I must cleanse my mind and voice of these things. So this should hopefully be enough now to get us through the gate. Let's head back. Actually, if you're wondering who or what the hell Bra Bones even is, as we mentioned earlier, the characters in Beautiful Desolation run quite the gamut of weird and twisted. There are religious zealot mechs, humans willingly stripped of their flesh for immortality, transhumanistic tribes warring for power, and ruthless alien-like hunter mercenaries, just to name a few. I have the password. I'm here because Nevra Horses is a right asshole. Varia is clearly the superior god. Alright, and we're in. Welcome to the kettle. So that is just a small glimpse into the world of beautiful desolation. Something we truly love about the game is that the devs set about creating a game that really portrays a rich and vibrant Africa, one that we just don't get to see often in other games. What's more, every character is fully voiced by an authentic cast of African voice actors. Each level has some piece of actual African scenery or object scanned in using photogrammetry, which is a kind of photo scanning technique that lets you take pictures of real world items and put them in a game. And that experimental African sci-fi fusion soundtrack you've been hearing in the background? Well, it's written by Mick Gordon, as in the master behind the modern Doom soundtracks. Cool, right? <laughs> so if you enjoy unique sci-fi worlds, story-driven games, or just want something a little different, then maybe give this a shot. The game launches on PlayStation 4 on May the 28th, so just around the corner now. Thanks for taking this little trip to Africa with me guys and uh, we'll see you all soon. Bye!